Hello, and welcome to The Shane Show 2.0. It's uh, 2019, and I have decided to start making videos again. Yay. Um, this time, however, I will not be trying to bust my own balls uh, making videos every single day. That didn't work out well. Um, instead, I will just be making one video a week, maybe. Maybe every two weeks. Um, for this series, though, I have planned eight PC builds, um, which is actually why I named it Mercury. I'll be naming these eight PCs after the eight planets of our solar system. Sorry, Pluto. Um, I'm doing that because it's cool if you're a nerd like me. Uh, and uh, for this first uh, PC, I'll be building a Windows 3.1 slash DOS machine. Um, and then uh, after it's built, uh, we'll do some other videos on some benchmarking and some testing of different software and things like that. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, let's get into the components of this machine. So originally I was planning on using this um, 386 motherboard. Uh, it comes equipped with an AMD 40 megahertz 386 processor, which would have been awesome to test out. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, onboard battery decided to leak acid everywhere and damaged some components and uh, some traces. So, uh, yeah, not an option right now, but maybe we'll fix it later and see what we can do, see if we can get it running. I also don't have any SIMs, so uh, no memory and uh, no fucking math coprocessor. Not that I really need that, but it would have been cool to test out. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, that was the original plan. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out, but uh, fortunately, my next uh, weakest motherboard is actually pretty awesome. It is a uh, DFI K6 XV 3 Plus slash 66 revision B2, of course. Um, it's got a socket 7 uh, CPU ZIF socket, which is the awesome part of this motherboard uh, because we'll be able to test like some. AMD and Intel and Cyrix processors in the same motherboard. Uh, we just have to make some adjustments to the dip switches to adjust the voltage and uh, memory or clock multipliers and things like that. So uh, that'll be cool to test in the future. As far as the other uh, uh, features of this motherboard, it's got three um, memory module sockets. So uh, pretty... Uh, handy if we want to do some weird upgrades or test other things. Um, two parallel ATA ports, a floppy uh, connector. It's got AGP, which uh, we will end up using because I think that's my uh, weakest uh, graphics card. So uh, a little overkill, but we'll see if it's compatible. Uh, you got your four PCI slots and three uh, ISA slots. So a lot of different options for configuring and testing out other cards and things like that. So uh, I think this will be a good uh, test machine once it's uh, complete. As far as the I.O. goes, we've got uh, your PS2 uh, mouse and keyboard ports to USB, which I don't think that there's a way to get it to work on DOS or Windows 3.11. So I'm going to try, but I think that's kind of a pointless port for what we're doing. Uh, we've got two serial ports and a parallel port. Um, so those ought to be fun to test some peripherals if I can find something to plug into them. Uh, but yeah, so there's the, uh, there's the motherboard. Um, let's actually set that off to the side there. Um, for the, let's do the CPU next. For the CPU, we've got an Intel uh, Pentium with MMX technology. Fuck yeah. 200 megahertz. Um, yeah, so that should be adequate for what we're doing. Well, it should be actually quite overkill, but I do plan on uh, underclocking it, um, testing some things with the L1 and L2 cache and see if I can uh, simulate the performance of some other machines. Uh, this way we can run some DOS games uh, in their native speed. Um, DOS games, a lot of them are uh, kind of real sensitive to the clock speed of your CPU and if you have something too fast in there, it'll actually run fast. So uh, we'll see if we can address that issue. I've also got the, uh, oops, the Intel inside badge for the front of the case. 
So pretty awesome to have that. Uh, for the memory, it is a uh, PC 100 at 64 megabytes. So uh, just to give you an idea, my first uh, uh, Windows 3.11 PC had uh, four megabytes. So 64 is gonna be quite overkill, but what can you do if that's the lowest uh, module you have? So that's what we got to use, that's what we'll use. Uh, what else do we got? Uh, sound card. Uh, so this is a Sound Blaster 16. It's model CT2980. Uh, pretty standard issue. Let's see, it's, it does have a uh, couple connectors on it. Oh, it looks like it's an IDE port. So uh, you could plug in a hard drive to it or a C well actually I think a CD-ROM is more appropriate for something like that but we'll test it out and see what we can do. Uh, this looks like some sort of add-on connector, probably for some MIDI device or something like that, I don't know. Um, for the connectors, we've got your joystick port, speaker out, line out, mic in, and line in. So, plenty of connectors for what we're doing, and we'll test it out and see how it all works. But, uh, uh, oh, I remember all this. So this is where you'd plug in uh, to your CD-ROM drive to get your CD audio. Pretty sweet. It is an ISA card, so we'll get to utilize one of our ISA slots. Pretty nifty. And video, we've got the uh, Trident uh, 9750. It has four megabytes of VRAM, I believe. Uh, yeah, four megabytes. Um, so just your standard VGA connector. It is an AGP card, but hopefully it's compatible with uh, Windows 3.11 and DOS games, but I guess we'll find that out eventually. Um, yeah, so there's that. The uh, storage we're gonna use is actually pretty cool. It's a Seagate Metalist 2132. It's 2.1 gigabytes. Uh, I'm not sure the file system that we're gonna have to use for this OS, but I don't even know if, I think two gigabytes is the cutoff, so I don't know, I guess we'll see, but that's the smallest hard physical hard drive I have. So uh, it is old, uh, the sticker on it shows 96. So I have, no, uh, <laughs> I have no faith that it's gonna last too long. Um, these old hard drives do have moving parts, so things fail and well, you know, but I did want to stick with like a physical hard drive just to try it out and hear those clicks click away. Um, if worse comes to worse, I will swap out the hard drive with a, uh, a little module that plugs into the uh, IDE slot that allows you to stick a SD card or compact flash into it. So then you're using a solid state memory and less chance of issues. So what else do we got? We got a Panasonic three and a half inch, uh, 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. So uh, pretty generic, but hopefully it works. I haven't tested it, but I did buy some floppy disks, which uh, on the listing actually said, uh, you know, they have no way of knowing that they work because they didn't test them. It was an unopened box, but yeah, they, they kind of uh, just randomly stop working eventually because, you know, old technology didn't know what the hell we were doing back then and then finally uh again kind of overkill but i think this is going to be the main method of getting software actually onto the the device um it's a 12 speed cd-rom drive and i think uh made by teak it's the cd 512 e <clears throat> and uh i think that my first cd-rom drive was i think a 2x i believe um, so a little overkill again, but I'm not too worried about that. I'm mostly concerned about seeing if we can underclock the processor and kind of simulate some older speeds, but this is the basic hardware setup. Uh, let's get to building it.
All right, let's take this uh, baby for a test toast. I have not turned it on yet. I got it all set up and I actually placed a microphone inside so we can hear uh, the clickety clicks of the hard drive and uh, any post beeps and whatnot. I thought that would be fun. Uh, let's see if it does it. Well, actually, first problem I see is uh, power LED just by having it plugged in appears to just stay on. So we'll have to take a look at that later, but uh, let's see what happens. Well, that doesn't sound good. But it is turning on. Cool, okay. Looks like it showed up the hard drive and the CD-ROM drive. And nothing on the hard drive, so uh, no system disk. Uh, hopefully it's not a disk error, but yeah, looks like everything worked perfectly. So uh, I guess next time um, what we'll be doing is uh, we'll take a look at this light and it sounds like the fan in there or something is not running as well as it should. So we'll take a look at that as well. And then we'll get to installing the software um, and configuring everything. So uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for future videos.